Hey guys, I want to take a few moments of your time here and share with you what I feel like God has put on my heart for uh, this coming year, uh, 2020. Uh, share some prophetic scripture with you and how I believe God's speaking to us as church out of those scripture. And uh, we'll do this in several episodes, so it won't take so long. You can listen to it in bite sizes. And I want to encourage you to go ahead and go down there and hit that subscribe button if you don't mind. Uh, and share this video with your friends and with your family and with your church family uh, so we can help uh, share what God's put on our heart concerning uh, the word of the Lord for 2020. Let me start off with a verse out of Hosea chapter 11 and verse 10. Uh, look at this verse with me very closely. It says, They will walk after the Lord. He will roar like a lion. Indeed, he will roar, and his sons will come trembling from the west. Very powerful scripture. This talks about the roar of the lion. I really believe that God is bringing us into a season to where he is roaring over his body. Hence, the roaring 20s. Not just a year, but I believe a decade we're stepping into uh, prophetically to be able to allow God to roar over his church. And what's going to happen here is whenever God roars over us, it's like the lion roaring on the prairie. And uh, he is stirring up all kinds of stuff. Things are jumping, moving, running, going here, going there. Things are being stirred up. And it is up to the pride of the lionesses to go out and to get the harvest uh, to reap what he stirs up. I believe God's roar over the church is going to begin to stir so many things up. It's going to do one of several things. Number one, it's going to give us a, an opportunity to be able to harvest the things that need to be harvested in our life. Um, I don't believe that our nation is going to go the way of those that don't know God and that God's going to judge our nation by the way that uh, those that don't know him go. I believe he's going to judge our nation by the way the church goes. And I think God is roaring over our nation right now and roaring over his church right now, stirring a lot of things up in a way that it is up to you and I to go out and to begin to harvest what God has intended for us to harvest, to be able to shut down what God's intended to be shut down, and to be able to raise up what God's intended for us to be uh, raising up. Uh, 2020 is going to be a year of great vision, clearer vision, further vision than we've ever had in our life as a church, as a nation, and yes, I do believe even individually. So I want you to begin to expect God to be able to increase the way that you see. And I just break the, the scales off of your eyes right now in the name of Jesus. And I decree 2020 vision for you in 2020. As the lion of the tribe of Judah begins to roar over your life, he begins to roar over your purpose and your destiny, and he begins to roar not just over you, but that roar begins to come through you for who God has called you to be and what he has assigned you to do. Here in Hosea, this verse, it starts out by saying, they will walk with the Lord or after the Lord. We are entering into a time to where our walk with God is more important than anything in our life. It's, it's, it's obviously been, uh, should have been the most important thing in our life, right? But it has to be given priority. Uh, in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these things will be added unto you. That word first is the word pro, first in priority. Uh, it is first above all, our responsibility is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His righteousness, right relationship, right standing that God's given to us. Look church, family, friends, in 2020, we can't afford to play church or to play around. We've got to be willing to give ourselves to the pursuit of the kingdom of God in order that our assignments may be fulfilled that God has called us to. It says here, they will walk after the Lord. He will roar like a lion. Indeed, he will roar and his sons will come trembling from the west. 
I, I, I really believe that the emphasis on sonship here. God is roaring, opening a way for sons and for daughters to come into who God has created them to be. Hosea 10 and verse 11. Now when we look at the word roar, uh, my wife uh, came up with an acronym on roar. And it is restoring order and royalty. I believe as God roars over us through this next decade, he's bringing things into order and into alignment in your life that have been out of order and out of alignment. Whenever things are in alignment, it releases strength. When things are in order, it releases authority. There is a new strength coming to you, coming to the church, and I even believe coming to our nation concerning the things of God and concerning our purpose. So when God's roaring over you, when he's speaking things over you, when he's decreeing things prophetically over your life, understand that God is restoring order and royalty. Why royalty? Well, we have to understand who we are. The church has had one humongous identity crisis over the last several decades and maybe even centuries. We are believing God that the word that he is giving us for this next decade and this year is that there is a identity that is being restored to his body, to his ecclesia, that is bringing us into a place of confidence. It is bringing us into a place of assurance that we can begin to walk out what God has called us to walk out in the earth. Now, you got to understand me. When I'm talking about assignment, I'm not talking about you getting ready for heaven or, you know, you getting out of here or something like that. I'm talking about the purpose and the plan that God has for you in the earth to cause Matthew chapter 6 and verse 10 to begin to come to pass in your life where he said, when you pray, pray this way, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God is restoring identity. Your identity is not as a church member. It's not even as a sinner trying to get to heaven by the best way you can. That's not your identity. Your identity is not someone who's a failure, who is uh, someone who's missed the mark, but your identity is as a son and a daughter of God. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 tells us that those that are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Right? Nowhere in Scripture does God refer to you as anything but sons and daughters. There's no other label that God puts on you. And you're going to begin to come into that. The church is going to begin to come into that this year. We're going to have an identity makeover. And God is going to cause Holy Spirit to begin to stir in us in ways that we've never experienced it before. Bringing an assurance and a confidence of who we are in him as we carry out his will in the earth. God is bringing us back into sonship. You need to get ready for that. You need to prepare your heart for that. You need to repent of allowing religion to dictate to you who you are and begin to allow Father to dictate to you who you are. You're a son. You are a son of God. That is pretty amazing. And in this year, starting even now, God is restoring order in our life. He is restoring protocol in our life. He is restoring authority in our life. He is restoring anointing in our life. He's restoring royalty. He's restoring your identity as sons and daughters of God. And you're going to walk in a different way. You're going to carry an authority and a confidence in you that you've never carried before. Let God do that in you. Matter of fact, right now, I'm just going to pray that over you, Father. In the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are roaring over your sons and your daughters. You're roaring over your church. And Father God, you're bringing things into order that have been out of order. Father, you're restoring with us and within us a true identity of who you called us to be. As sons and as daughters in your kingdom. I just decree that. And I release that over one, everyone that is watching this video in Jesus' mighty name. Here's something God spoke to me uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, I want to just decree it to you over this video today. And it is this. God does not desire to wow you as a mystical being somewhere way out in the universe. 
He desires to wow you, show you his goodness, and surprise you as a good father. I want you to begin to expect this year God doing and releasing things in your life that you never expected and you never asked for. The scripture says that he is able to do abundantly above all that we could ever ask or all that we could ever think. Isn't that amazing? I want you to begin to just position your heart and position your mind to let God wow you as a good, good father. Here's another verse, very familiar verse to many of us. It's out of the book of Haggai, chapter 2 and verse 9. It says, The latter glory of this house will be greater than the former glory, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. Now, I don't know what you've been operating in or out of from 2020 backwards, but I hear the Lord saying over his church, over us, that what we have experienced in the past is not going to compare what he's getting ready to bring into our life even now. It said that that glory will not compare to the coming glory. We know this word glory is the word kabod, and it literally means the weight of a thing. God's weight, the weight of his presence is coming into your life, if you will allow him, is coming into your life to bring breakthrough, to bring a breakthrough like you've never had before. But it's not just for breakthrough, it's for breakout. Hallelujah. When, when the kabod of God begins to sit in your life and on your life, you're going to begin to break out into who God created you to be. You were created by God to thrive in his presence. That is the atmosphere that man was created to, to thrive or to flourish in. Anything outside God's presence, we're not going to flourish. We're going to stumble, bumble around. We're going we're to miss it, mess up, and all those things. But when the weight of God, the kabod of God, the glory of God sets in your life, you begin to operate out of an atmosphere that, and out of a, a realm, if you would, that God created you to function out of. Listen to this. <clears throat> Everything that God created has the ideal atmosphere for it to live in, for it to bear fruit in, and for it to function in, right? God took fish and he put them in water. Water is that divine place for them to be who he created them to be. It's their Eden, right? Uh, birds are for the air. Plants have soil. Man has the presence of God. That's where we were created to function out of at our highest level. And if you allow Father to do that, he's going to cause the kabod, the glory, his glory to come into your life and to operate out of your life in a fashion that it has never, ever done before. Are you ready for that? Let's just release that over you right now. Father, we decree over everyone watching right now that the kabod, your kabod, your glory, the weight of who you are, your presence is going to begin to operate out of them, Father, in a way that it has never done before. And I thank you, God, that you're releasing that into their life even now in Jesus' mighty name. He said there would be peace. I think we're coming into a place that we're going to live out of peace and not out of turmoil or fear. Paul told Timothy that God had not given us a spirit of fear, but one that is of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Isn't that amazing? A sound mind. And God's bringing us into a place of peace. Doesn't mean there's not going to be things that are going on in our life that may seem like they're topsy-turvy. It means in those situations that we should be frustrated, upset, and fearful, there will be the peace of God to cause us to walk through it as the Father's intended us to walk through things in life. Here's one thing 2020 is bringing us in a greater way. We're going to stop living from the place of struggle and defeat, and we're going to start living from the position of the victory of our risen Christ. Amen? God's shifting us out of a place of struggle and defeat, and he's moving us into a mindset to where we can position ourselves to live out of the victory of our risen Christ. Hallelujah. Haggai 2.9, 
It says the, the glory, the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this peace place, I will give you peace, declares the Lord of hosts. Amen. Hey, guys, we're going to stop right here for this video. I'm going to come back and make some others. We're going to try to keep them between 15 and 20 minutes. And we'll probably do this in four parts. But would you do us a favor? Would you subscribe to our YouTube channel here? Would you share this video? Would you kindly like this video and leave us some comments at the bottom if this has blessed you? Maybe even if it hasn't blessed you, uh, leave us a comment. But we love you guys. We're praying for the church uh, in, this, in this new year that God is bringing us into of clear 2020 vision as the Lion of Judah begins to roar over his body in 2020. God bless you. Join us on the next video. Would you do that?